free for the people. That's fabulous as long as I can walk into a sandwich shop and they'll give me a free sandwich and I can send my kids to college for free and um, go into Sears and get some new jeans and, and, and they won't charge me for them. I'm all about it. But until that happens, I need to earn a living. That's what I do for a living. You know what I mean? For sure. So it's just, it's just not right. It's a wonderful convenience, I agree, but it's, it's just not, not right. Sure, sure. Okay, so um, how do you feel on a different pirate realm? How do you feel about pirate radio? Underground, unlicensed radio broadcasting. Um, I, I, I think it's fat, I think it's having an alternative to what is spoon-fed to us by, you know, Clear Channel and these other entities it is, an, is a necessity. I've always said that, you know, like college radio is the saving grace of American music, and, and there would not have been the music scenes of the 80s and 90s had it not been for college radio, and I, and I, I look at pirate radio, excuse me, in a very similar light, you know, it's, it's people like you sitting down and playing what you want to play, not looking at a, nowadays, you look, it used to be a, you look at a list and you play what they tell you to play, right. now you look at a screen and you just say what's coming up next, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You don't even get and, a choice anymore. And so it, it's it's all based on 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 what you know what helps sell bottles of Pepsi or shaving cream or whatever you know. So I, I, I think pirate radio, as like as college as with college radio, it's 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 what keeps uh, it's it's what keeps the uh, the new ideas flowing. Right. Yeah, we agree. We agree. <laughs> there wouldn't have been a Primus. There wouldn't have been a Nirvana. There wouldn't have been Chili Peppers. There wouldn't have been a lot of these bands if it weren't for college radio and pirate radio. All right. Well, now jumping topics here. Um, I have a lot of friends that are bassists, and everyone is intrigued, but has never seen the Wham Ola. Um, some people aren't even aware of what that is. Can you describe to the people what the Wham Ola is? Well, the Whamola is this glorious hunk of steel that was given to me uh, several years ago now, late night after a show in Burlington, Vermont. I was at a club after the show at a bar drinking, and I came back, and my road manager said, hey, look at this thing these guys left for you. And it's, it was this metal rod with a, a wooden fingerboard on it and one string and a hinge and a pickup. And I was like, what the hell? So I just kind of started banging on it with this drumstick and started getting these strange sounds out of it. And um, I just dubbed it the Whamola and actually wrote a song called the Whamola, called Whamola. And now it's the, you know, it's the background theme track for, you know, has been for a couple of years now for South Park. Um, but it is a spectacular, roaring, gurgling, um, menacing hunk of machinery that, uh, it, that everyone should know about. It's a spectacular device. And I can't wait to see it as well. I, I assume it'll be there on Saturday, possibly? Uh, if, they, if, if I'm assuming my guy packed it with all our stuff, okay. yes. Hoping that it's packed, <laughs> right? <laughs> it better be in there. Right. Uh, that's how it goes. Um, Electric Apricot. Was that your first time making a movie? Uh, a feature film, yes. It was. That was our... That was our attempt. We had about twelve dollars and fifty cents to make a make a movie, and we made it. And what was the inspiration to do that movie? Well, there's always projects. You know, we're always talking. You know, me and friends, and you know, I have a lot of, and uh, we just uh, there's always ideas for for films and projects and whatnot. And that was one where I was talking to Matt Stone one day, and I was like, "Yeah, I got this idea, blah blah blah." And we just started laughing about it, and and it seemed like a good idea, and uh, so I started talking to a mutual friend of ours who's a producer and uh, he said yeah let's do it we could do that with very limited uh, financial resources because you have access to that world and right. so we did it and even as we were making it I didn't think it would actually become a movie but it did and we won some bunch of awards with it and had a pretty good underground cultish run with it and still I'm taking it to Amsterdam here in the next month for a festival out there and right. um you know, we released it through National Lampoon, which unfortunately, as we were releasing the film, the president slash owner of National Lampoon was indicted for stock manipulation and fraud. So our film kind of went nowhere after that. But, you know, you, 
you can get it through Netflix and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Do you enjoy acting? Is that something you really enjoyed doing when you got in there? Uh, acting's fine. I enjoy directing, you know. I mean, I've directed a lot of videos. I enjoy that process. Um, I'm a huge film guy, you know. People like Aaliyah Kazan and Frank Capra and Sergio Leone. These guys are all my heroes, you know, so... Um, I enjoy that. I enjoy the process. Good. And, and, and finally, where do you see yourself in three years? I have no idea. That's the best answer I've ever heard yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I never know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Who can? <laughs> All I know is that it goes by really fast. That's very true. Very true. Okay. Um, well, that is all the questions I have. I wanted to thank you for your time, first off. All right, Rocky Flats. All right, yeah. I look forward to the show Saturday, and uh, thanks for the interview, man. We look forward to maybe getting more down the road with you. Cool. Have a good one. You too, man.